Father, I praise you. Honor and glory belong to you alone. Lord, I pray that you would speak and give me the unctioning. Lord, give me the words. Give me the ability to understand what it is that needs to be said to your congregation today. Lord, I ask and I trust and I believe with all my heart, Lord, that you are faithful and that you do what you say you're going to do. That you would give us words to speak when it's time to speak. And so, Lord, I lean upon the scriptures and I say, Lord, speak for your servant is listening. And so, Lord, may your will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. The message today is entitled, The Deal with China. Now, I've been going on preaching here at Grace Christian Center for 17 years this summer. 17 years. And for the most part of those, that ministry, uh, from early point, early on, all the way up in 2007, when we first started, up until 2019, I was always speaking on a great deal, a great amount of, of Scripture in regards to prophetic um, end-time events. But since 2019, the Lord has really allowed me to speak more about, uh, He's took me on a journey to, to learn more and to speak more and to be taught more um, from myself as, as I, he would use me to teach others about not just the character of God, but how our character has to align with the character of God if we call ourselves Christians and what it means to walk in holiness and, and righteousness and, and, you know, just the fruits of the Holy Spirit and, and things like that. And so uh, if you'll look at the messages from the previous three, four years, uh, you'll see that the messages are more geared towards that than anything else. Yeah, I've never abandoned end time scripture pro- preaching, but, but uh, the Lord kind of put me on time out with a lot of that. I, and so, but here recently the Lord, and I spoke to Anna and said, the Lord put on my heart that he's like, he's given me a lot of understanding once again, because I really hadn't been just, I've just really been focusing on, on, on our walk with God, on our, you know, just the everyday living with the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Lord really spoke to me and said, you know what? open up these scriptures once again, and I'm going to speak a word that will bring better understanding. And, you know, scripture, uh, prophecy is like driving a car in the desert, and you see a mountain range up ahead, and you're 20 miles away, and you could see the outline of that mountain range. But as you drive closer and closer and closer, the mountain range becomes more and more clear. And that's what preaching and understanding the scriptures in regards to end-time prophecy is like as you get closer things become more clear you begin to understand and so you know that that is what where we are at today and so i've spoken about a lot of things back in 2008 and 9 and 2010 uh, with regards with many nations uh, russia and, and iran and and you know back, back when um, just so many things were going on uh, in regards to the war of Ezekiel, that's still a war that has not been um, fulfilled yet. It's still a war waiting to happen. And so with things like that, preaching those things years and years ago, you're, you're, we're on the verge of seeing something like the war of Ezekiel happening with, in regards to with Russia coming out and doing what they're doing. And, but what, what about China? And that's what I want to talk about is China. A lot of people are, are, are not really... Uh, and I'm talking about just people in general, not really give China a big, uh, a, a big, you know, paying attention to. But let me just say this right off the bat. At the arrival of the final Antichrist, China will be the superpower of the world. Let me just tell you that. China will be the sole superpower of the world when the Antichrist arises. So with that, I want to talk to you about scripture, what it pertains to China. And not only that, but what I like is how when we talk about end time prophecy, we can go all over the place. We go on a journey. So put your spiritual seatbelts on because we're going to talk about a lot of things in a certain period of time. And you're going to say, well, I thought we were talking about China. We are because it's all tied together. But when we come back, you'll see how this all comes together. The deal with China in Revelation 16, 12 through 14. Now, this is towards the end of God's judgments. God is about finished judging this earth, and the great white throne judgment is about to be unveiled. But in verse 12, it says here, the sixth angel 
poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, that's Satan, and out of the mouth of the beast, the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of the great day of God Almighty. This is for the battle of Armageddon, what is about to happen at this point in Scripture. But go back up to verse 12. The great river Euphrates and its water was dried up to make a way for the kings of the east. Today, the river Euphrates is drying up. The great river Euphrates has its beginnings from the Garden of Eden. It's, one of the four, it's among four of the oldest rivers in the world. The great river Euphrates. It's drying up like never, ever before in history. People thought that this could never happen. Theologians thought, well, this could happen like in a matter of a week because it's going to be a biblical event and then all of a sudden the battle of Armageddon will come. And who are the kings of the East? The kings of the East, its leader is China. You see, when Jesus was a baby, there were three that came from the East. They called them Magi. They called them kings. But there were three. Watch this. There were three that came from the East to visit the baby Jesus. Amen? Amen? But in this end time event, there will be three demons, three, that will be unleashed from, from this ministry of Satan and his antichrist and false prophet, and they will come out to gather the nations for war. This king from the east, which is China, they're in a battle today for land, for territory. Now, again, like I said in the beginning, China will be the sole superpower of the world sooner than you probably think. Now, the rising of China as a superpower is unthinkable to many, but believe me, everything is made in China. And China is going to defy the Antichrist. China will come against the Antichrist and they will come against God because China cares about no one or nothing else but themselves. Now think about this frightening fact that I just said. And I said, yes, fact. L listen, please. The sole superpower of the world will be communist. Do you hear that? The soon so superpower of the world will be a communist government. A government that defies God, period. They do not believe in the existence of any God but themselves. This is what is on the rise. The coming war, which with the scripture we just read, it talks about the gathering for the battle of Armageddon. This is at the, at the, towards the end of the seven-year tribulation. Think about all this in ages. You have the Old Testament age, and now you have the New Testament age, which is what we're in today. And then you have the tribulation age, seven years, where the Antichrist will rule. And then you have the millennial age, which is a thousand-year rule reign of Jesus Christ on the earth. And then after that, the end. We are only in the New Testament age. That's why the Bible talks about things in ages, where we are about to go into the next age. The world is, that is. The end of the world is not coming anytime soon. The world is about to head into a seven-year tribulation, the rise of a final man, Antichrist, who will rule the world for a very brief period of time, which Jesus will destroy at the splendor of his coming, at the second coming of Christ, at the end of the seven-year tribulation. This is something important to understand because from right now to the rise of the Antichrist, so much will happen. It will make your head spin. You'll get so sick. 
But let me just tell you this. We are seeing the great river Euphrates dry up. What Revelation 16, 12 says is going to happen for the kings of the east. If you look at a map far east of Jerusalem, where the battle of Armageddon will happen, far east is China. And this river, you can Google it. You can look online. This river is drying up. They're seeing ancient cities because the rivers are dropping so low, they're seeing ancient, they're finding ancient tunnels that have been buried for years. Ancient ruins. The river is drying up for China's 200 million man army to march across the region to Jerusalem to fight. China is on the rise as a superpower. And you know what, America, the sole superpower has been in a war with China for a long time. Uh, may I say the Korean War? Uh, may I say the Vietnam War? All backed by China. Now, the biggest of them all, Taiwan. Taiwan is about to have its presidential elections here next year. And determining what will happen, most likely China will invade Taiwan. Now, look. Michael, how do you know this? Look, look at what Russia has done. It's the same scenario with Russia and Ukraine, China and Taiwan. Russia said, we want Ukraine now. See, China says the same thing. Taiwan belongs to them. It belongs to them. And we see now why Vladimir Putin has charged out of Russia into Ukraine and thousands upon thousands of people are dying. Why? Because Vladimir Putin is sick. He has cancer. He's dying. And in his last days, he's making a charge for his mother, Russia, to claim what he believes spiritually belongs to Russia. He's a man driven by spiritual principles. And I'm no fan of Vladimir Putin. I'm no fan of any man. I'm a fan of Jesus Christ. Amen. But he's driven and he's going to do what he has to do as long as he is alive. So what makes you think that Taiwan will not experience the same invasion that Russia is doing with Ukraine? It's going to happen. Now look, th th this is what some people just, I'm going to read this to you in this article. Not only are military analysts agreeing, but even a high-ranking military American general is saying the same thing. He is, um, he, he believes that Within, by 2025, he oversees 110,000 members, armed forces of the Air Mobility Com Command. And this is a general on record, an American general on record saying, we will be at war. My gut tells me, he says, by 2025, we will be at war with China. Troops on the ground. This is what he is telling his 110,000 United States servicemen who work in the Air Mobility Combat Unit. You know what the Department of Defense said when he said that last week? The Department of Defense said, well, that's not our stance. Uh, we, we're working out relations right now. You know, last time I checked, when you're an officer in the military, you're not supposed to make those kind of comments. You can actually be court-martialed. But he made those comments. He told his platoons, his 110,000, get ready. My gut feeling says we're going to be in war. You want to know why? Because in 2024, the elections in Taiwan are happening. And if they don't go the way of China, then China's going to invade. Look, more importantly, here's someone else. Eldridge A. Colby, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Strategy and Force Development. Here is what he said just a month ago about China. He says, quote, but China on its own is not strong enough. It is, it too is roughly 20% of global GDP. So how could China pose such a threat to our interests? By dominating Asia. Asia is now again the center of the world. Upwards of 50% of global GDP going forward. If Beijing could dominate Asia, it would be in a very strong position to dominate the world and America. Now, is China actually going to pursue this goal? This goal, this could have been the topic of a good debate a decade ago, but now the answer seems fairly clear to be yes. 
Beijing's behavior, and at a deeper level, China's interests all point in the direction of Beijing pursuing a form of soft imperial control, what we might call homogeny over Asia. This would likely take the form of formerly independent states in Asia orient orienting their eco economic, foreign, and security, and ultimately even their domestic affairs to Beijing. Beijing would not directly control them, but it would be the center and leader of this system and would have immense leverage to enforce its will. If China becomes dominant in such a way over Asia, it will have a controlling influence over roughly half of the global economy. With this power, it will undoubtedly unsure, ensure that it is the center, the prime beneficiary, and the effectively the director of the global economy. And why not? In this context, Beijing could ensure that China is the richest, most economically secure, and most influ influential country in the world. Eldridge A. Colby. Now, you have generals saying this, you have military analysts saying this, and you have a man that serves, and uh, he has served pre presidential administration saying this as well. This is very real. This is a very real threat. Now, spy balloons. Now we're looking at these balloons. You know, people, you know, I, I honestly, I believe this is what the Lord has put in my heart. I'm not saying this is what does say it the Lord. But I believe that these balloons we've seen flying around, America says they're from China. And everyone else says they're from China. And they may be from China and they may not be from China. But what if they are from China? And, what, and if they are from China... Are you, do you really believe they're spying? Because do you remember just recently here in Houston when the Chinese U.S. Embassy, before authorities were trying to storm the gates, the, the embassy, the ambassador, the Chinese ambassador here in Houston, they were in the center court of their building burning documents, burning everything. They, and, to, and even to this day, they still will not let the authorities enter into the building. They were setting fire to things in the, in the center court. This is what really happened. Channel 13 Sky Eye News Cam was flying over the property and they could see all these Chinese officials burning documents. The spies have been here. The spies already know. Just like we already know their business, they already know our business. They don't need balloons to do this. You, you know what? Here's what I know. COVID came from China. And if these balloons are doing anything, it's not spying, but it may very well be the releasing of biochemical warfare. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. Something that, that, that could kill you slowly over time. That's falling out of the air, spreading throughout the air, and it could kill you and crops slowly over time. You know, because there's a theme in the book of the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, God commands, do not destroy the earth. Do not destroy the seed. Do not do that because God says, I will judge this earth. I will judge the seeds. I will, I will burn that world up because God's the one who created it. But you see, man has such, such an obsession with either trying to save this physical world or destroy this physical world. And a, a nation like China has no love for people. The heart of true communism they are willing to surrender millions for the sake of their nation. They do not care about how many people die. And so we, ha we have a very, uh, our memories, we're very easy to forget. But COVID came from China. It's biochemical warfare. It was set upon the world. The world has been at war with China for quite some time. And China will be victorious. Because when you look at our nation, we are a laughing stock. And I'm not talking about the president. I'm talking about the people in the way we live our lives and the way we take God for granted. Look at our, our youth. Our youth is destroying themselves. Our kids go to school and shoot each other, kill each other. They, a, a, a junior high schooler pouncing on the head of a little, a little girl. Kids taking their own lives because they're being bullied physically in school. 
All this happening, teachers having sexual relations with their students, fifth grade, fourth grade, high school. It's sickening. It's disgusting. We are destroying ourselves, and China sees all this. And so does God. And you see, so, so people talked about how Vladimir Putin is so cold-hearted and calculated. He knows when to attack, and he's attacking because his time is short. He's sick. And that's why he began to move. And the same it is with China. You see, it's all God's timetable. And if you continue, Christian, in America, to sit there and just, well, you know, as long as my refrigerator's full, it's okay, because when all this happens, I'll get caught up in the rapture. If you think like that, you're not going to get caught up in the rapture. Because you have no heart for people. You have no heart to win the lost. You're just stuck on self. You're, you're actually, you're in idolatry. Because if you see all this happening in the world, Christian, and you're not praying, and you're not helping build up the church of Jesus Christ, as Jesus commanded, you're in idolatry. Because you're only concerned about what your life is about. Paying your bills. Buying food for yourself. Oh, that's not what Jesus taught us, though, is it? Jesus taught us the opposite. Jesus said he came to serve, not to be served. You know how you get out of debt? You know how you get out of misery? You know how you get out of hell? By serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And it begins by experiencing his love. Hallelujah. You know, when I've always met Christians, I was always taught, oh, you're a Christian? Oh, yeah, where do you serve? What church do you belong to? And today's not like that. A lot of Christians church hop. They don't belong to ministries. They do their own thing. Lone wolf Christianity. Bible never heard of it. Bible never taught it. You're supposed to come under the wings of your pastors because your pastors are under the wings of Jesus. And we do this together. Oh, so many Christians in America, huh? Why are your children killing each other in the schools? Why are your children having sex at such young ages? Getting pregnant, having abortions. But yet we're, a, we're, we're majority of us are Christians. We lie. We offer lip service to God and our hearts are so far away from him. And China is watching us destroy ourselves as a nation. I love America, but I'm going to tell you something. America has blood on its hands. Our nation is evil. It is corrupt. I love this nation. I thank God to be an American. I love our military. But we, we have a problem. We have a problem in the churches, and we have a problem in the White House. And just because there's a Democrat is not the reason why I'm saying this. Because they're all hearts are far from God. We've allowed liberalism or conservatism to come into our churches when we should have allowed the Holy Spirit to come. Amen. COVID came from China. But people are looking at this. Oh, it's a balloon. It's a UFO. Aliens. UFO in the sky. You have a, a slide for that? I'm going to put that up real quickly. Aliens. UFO in the sky? No. They are manifestations of demons. Period. A lot of people are saying these balloons, oh, the government is hiding something. It's from another world. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen 14 through 15 says this. And no wonder, for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Demons are able to transform into many different things. Objects, people, things. You see these unidentified flying objects. They are UFOs, yes, because they're manifest, demonic spirits manifesting. You remember the two angels? They went to Sodom and Gomorrah. They were two angels of God. God sent them to Sodom and Gomorrah to get Lot out of there. And they were angels appearing as men. 
And they came into Sodom and Gomorrah and the men of the town wanted to have sexual relations with these two angels because they were perverted and sick. And yet two angels from heaven who appeared as men manifested as men. How much more a demonic spirit who has the ability, they have not lost this ability to do the same thing. They can manifest as an angel of light. They can, and his ministers as well, can manifest. They can make things appear, you know. Did you see that black movement happen down the hallway? Hey, I saw something weird out there. What was that? If it don't bring glory to God, it's not of God. And there are things out there in the sky. And one day, the Antichrist, now listen very carefully. One day, the Antichrist will use the theory of aliens and UFOs and extraterrestrial life, he'll use all of that. Please don't forget this if you get left behind in the rapture. They will use that theory as an explanation to why millions of Christians have suddenly disappeared from the earth. Because we've entered into a new dimension. We are evolving. Like Darwin said, we evolved before from monkeys to men. We're now evolving from humans to something even greater. So that's why this happened. We're just continuing the cycle of evolution. And it has to do with extraterrestrial life. They're going to come and visit us. They're going to give us life. The Bible says there's only life on planet Earth. Get that through your thick heads. God said there is only life on the earth. There is no other life anywhere else. They would have found it. They have these telescopes that can see trillion miles, light years away. I don't even understand how that is. It's far away. They still cannot find E.T. because E.T. is not out there. Oh, but we received a, a radio signal from far, far away. Yeah, it's the one that you bounced off 20 years ago. It came back. Second Thessalonians 2, 19 through 12 says this. What I just said, let's read this. Paul says in, towards the end of scripture, he says, the coming of the lawless one, the Antichrist, he is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. A lie will be introduced by Satan. That they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. There are people today who do not want to receive the gospel message they do not want to receive the gospel message. So they believe the lies and eventually the lie of the Antichrist. They will believe this. Lies are being introduced daily. You know what the Lord said? The Lord said, you know what? People in America, even Christians in the church, they're so concerned about, oh, well, ABC News is lying. Uh, CBS News is lying. Fox News is lying. Oh, we can't trust the media. They're full of lies. They're full of lies. Well, you know what? This Bible right here, it's the truth. Amen? It's the truth. And the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. This is the truth. Amen? ABC don't know this book. CBS don't know this book, and even Fox News doesn't know this book. But yet, nobody's in it, Christian. You're hardly ever in this book, aren't you? You want to know truth? You complain that you can't get the truth from the news? Well, here's truth right here. Why aren't you not in this truth? Why aren't your kids in this truth? This is truth right here. Do you really want truth? Or are you just interested in... in crying and making a point that is really no point at all. Satan will introduce a lie. What did I tell you? When millions are suddenly raptured and caught up to meet the Lord in the air, there will be a lie that will be introduced. And the Bible says here that God will allow them to believe the lie because they refuse to believe in the truth. The truth is telling you, Christian, come. Come. Look, for, for example, go to the last scripture in the Bible. The last two scriptures, Revelation 21. Let me just pull this up real quickly. Revelation 22, I'm sorry. Revelation 22, verse 20, 
21. Pull that up when you get the chance. Thank you so much. They're awesome upstairs. He who testifies to these things says, yes, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. That's us talking to the world, to the church, and we're giving an invitation to the world. Surely I am coming quickly. Come, Lord Jesus. We, 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 we are calling, come, Lord, come. Come, Lord. And we, have, we as Christians, we have this in our heart to tell the people of the world, come, come to church. Come to Jesus. You know why people don't come to church? Because the Christians are not even there. They come when it's convenient to them. You're not going to get saved going to church. But it surely tells a lot about your relationship with the church, though. Because we're, we, we are accountable to each other. We are. We are a family. Think about it. What if your family members never get together on Thanksgiving and Christmas and things like that? Then you'll know that there's something not right in the family, is there? Right? Yeah. So when you look at the church and they don't gather so much for the most part, there's something not right. And it's their relationship with Jesus. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, I'll tell you why I'm talking about this. <laughs> because Satan knows that there's power in the church. There's no such thing as lone, lone, lone Christian mentality, ministry. It's all together. Look, we see what's happening with China. And you know what? I don't, I'm going to tell you, I'm of that school of thought as well. I also believe we, were go, we are going to enter into a full-blown war with China. I hope I'm wrong. And you know what? God can change it at any moment. He could delay this 20 more years. Amen. And he could say, no, it's going to happen now. But you know, look at the history between America and China. We've been at each other for years. Since, since Korea. Since Vietnam. And it's coming full front to face each other. Now, there is something that has to happen to America because, look, all prophecy, all scripture evolves around who? Can you tell me who? Israel. Israel. It revolves around Israel. Because God has a date, a destiny, an appointed time to deal with the nation of Israel. Do you know why Israel has been so prosperous? I'm going to tell you why. Because as a nation, America has been the big brother to Israel. And when the war of Ezekiel breaks out, a war which was told in the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel, a war that has still to this day not happened. And it gives great detail, Ezekiel 38 and Ezekiel 39. It gives great detail about the nations involved in this war. Names nations by name, Iran, Turkey, Russia. That these are nations that will come against Israel. Why? Because their big brother is not on the scene to defend them. So this is why I say, when you understand scripture, you understand to a certain ability by the Holy Spirit, certain movements when things happen. Look, let me read this and explain it. Ezekiel 38, 13, explaining in regards to when, when these nations come against Israel, here's what the rest of the world says. Look, Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish and all their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder against Israel, that is? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder? You see, all the nations, Sheba, Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish and all their young lions, who is that? Watch this. Some theologians totally disagree and have a complete different theology. I don't agree with them. I think the original, one of the early original commentaries ever written on this, I, I believe this is true. And this is what this says, the young lions. Who are the young lions? Who gave birth to the West? 
When you look at the Roman Empire and the Anglo-Saxons, the Saxons, all of them, the Germans, all of them, when, when the Roman Empire broke up, you know, 400 AD into that, 501, when they started to break up, Great Britain became a nation. And Great Britain for centuries known as the lion, their emblem, and their colonies spread throughout the world. Now bring this back up, please. Great Britain had colonies throughout the world and basically the West comes from Britain, from Rome to Britain. And so these nations symbolize the West, Sheba, Dedan, the young lions. You know, America is a young lion. We came from Britain as a nation, the young lions. Look, all those nations, they'll say to the enemies coming against Israel, they're just gonna question why you're attacking Israel. Why are you doing this? Are you gonna take all their gold and silver away? We're not gonna get involved in a fight because we're powerless. The West is gonna fall. And you know who's gonna cause this to fall? China is already pushing the West down. Look at how the economy is hurting with what's going on in the war in Ukraine right now. With, with, with all their, their hopes being dashed with the gas pipelines de being dependent for so long with Russia. All of this is happening. It's all, different pieces all over the world are happening together at the same time. And, and it's all coming, and you look at Israel, the war with Israel is coming. The war of Ezekiel, not the war of Armageddon. But my point is, is that if America is not there to defend Israel in the war of Ezekiel, it fulfills the war of Ezekiel. Because here's the outcome of the war of Ezekiel. Look, right here, look, verse 38, chapter 38, verse 22 and 23, and chapter 39, verse 7 and 8. Let me show you this. God says, and I will bring him to judgment, meaning the armies that invade Israel in this war. I will bring him to judgment and with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him. Flooding, rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Verse thir uh, chapter 39, verse 7. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name anymore. Then the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. Now let me sum all this up. The West has to fall. Israel has to lose its big brother so that this war can happen and only God will show up and save Israel. Because if you look at the Six Day War in 1967, Israel was about to be annihilated, but somebody came to save them. The United States of America. With their weapons and other nations came to their rescue quickly. The West showed up. The West showed up. By the hand of God. But this war will be different. Nations will abandon Israel. All of them. And God is going to himself by hailstones, by r flooding rain, by fire and brimstone, which fell on Sodom and Gomorrah. It will fall on all these other nations. Not missiles, not bullets. Not artillery. No, no, it doesn't say that, does it? No. Because God has a date with Israel to prove to Israel that he has always loved them. And they will profane his name no more. Right now, they still profane the name of Jesus. But one day, and you know who allows Israel to continue to profane the name of Jesus? The West. Because we feed Israel all of our immorality, not just our weapons of, uh, uh, of military weapons and, and, and our economical uh, ideas, you know, McDonald's, hey, McDonald's in, in Israel, hey, you know, surprised I don't have a Whataburger over there. But, you know, we are going to fall as the West. I've had people mad at me for saying this. 
But Israel has to be left alone in order for this war to, to come to, to, a, to happen. And that is where we're headed. Look at our nation. Our nation is crumbling from within. Now look, it's 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Yes, we noticed for the past several years, everyone in America who loves Jesus and America quotes this scripture all the time. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, I will heal their land. You know that scripture, it was originally for King Solomon when he dedicated the temple. It was for Israel. This scripture right here. Now, yes, God can honor this scripture for any nation who will repent of their sins because look at, look, look at uh, Jonah. When Jonah went to the Ninevites, they did just this right here. They repented of their sins. They re re renounced everything. They seeked God. And 200 plus thousand people were saved. Jonah wasn't happy about it. But they did this scripture. And they were Gentiles. Look, look at King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. Look. King Nebuchadnezzar came to his senses after being, living like a cow for seven years in the, in the pasture. He admitted, God, you are the king. And the whole, he called the whole nation to repentance. You see what one leader can do? So yes, God can do this for Gentile nations too, because he has. Amen. And yes, this could be done. But do you really see repentance in America? It has to begin with leaders because look, Nebuchadnezzar, the leader of Babylon, he repented. Look, and not only that, uh, the leader of the Ninevites, the king, he repented and the whole nation repented. We don't see our leaders repent. Our president, whether it be Trump, Obama, or Biden, or Clinton, or Bush, or any future, we have not seen any of these presidents repent of their sins and call to a, a national repentance. We have never seen 2 Chronicles 7, 14 come to pass, I believe, in our recent memory. Maybe at times God has reprieved us from judgment, yes. But we have not really seen this because what I see is our youth in America, they're murdering themselves. We're continually to kill babies. Abortion. We're calling good evil and evil good. And China is watching. Russia is watching. Iran is watching. The enemies of God are watching. The church is watching. Jesus is watching. And so will we have revival or will we have war? Just this week in Kentucky, at a seminary, a Bible seminary school, Ashbury, I think it's believe it's called Ashbury, they have their usual Wednesday night prayer. Now watch this. Their Wednesday night prayer service. They, students came in, I don't know how many it was, maybe 20, 40 of them. They came in to pray into the sanctuary. The sanctuary is maybe twice as big as this one. And they're praying there on Wednesday night. And they just, that was Wednesday night. Today's Sunday. They haven't stopped praying. They've been praying 24 7, around the clock. Other people are coming in to visit to see what's going on. They're praying. I'm sure they're going home, taking a shower, getting rest, come back, but the prayer service has not ended. It's been going on since Wednesday. Is this revival? Well, here's what I do know. It could be a move of God. Because when God moves like that, he doesn't release the congregation. Now, some may come in and out the doors, yes, but for, he's holding the service still. It's still going on. I've yearned for that to happen here where we just know God's not allowing this to end. What if you came here on a Friday night and you're ready to go home at 8 o'clock and all of a sudden the Spirit's just moving? But I got to go home. I got to work tomorrow. But yet the Spirit of God is moving. Well, would you go home or would you stay in the presence of God? If something like that was to happen, churches in America aren't ready for this. There's just a few that are. 
Are we even ready for this? Are we ready for this? Look, 2 Peter 3, 9 through 13, my final scripture says this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but he is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any of us should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's what he's looking for, repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. And therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct with godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nonetheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth in, right, in which righteousness dwells. I love this nation, but this is not my home. I love Texas, but this is not my home. My home is of another place. I've never been there. But Jesus says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for those who love him. God is coming to judge this place. And a lot of people, especially Christians, are very unsettled with that, that God judges. He is a God of grace and mercy, but he is also a God of righteous, holy wrath and judgment. And he is coming to judge his church. He is coming to judge the nations. The nations wage war. And God sits on his throne and laughs at the plans of the wicked because he is in control. You know what's, you know, the book of Revelation 1 says that in 1 verse 3 and 4, I believe, that blessed is he who understands the words and the prophecies of this book. It's a blessing to know in time scripture. It's a blessing to know scripture. Why? So that you can warn others. You know, you'll never, ever, ever, ever reach your full potential in Jesus on this earth if you don't stop serving yourself. And there are going to be many people, Christians, who thought they were Christians in hell because they were deceived by the culture of America. You know, you know I saw, let me just, my wife and I were, were dealing with this thing last night. Do you know why Peter said, Lord, if that's really you, call me out and I'll too walk on the water. You remember that? Why do you think Peter said that? Well, you know, you got to understand something. If you're looking at that, was Peter doing it to be prideful? To be boastful? Hey, I can do this too. Because I know a lot of times Jesus had to rebuke Peter sometimes in the ministry. And then not only that, we see that eventually Peter in the future of that, from that moment in the future, Peter will deny Jesus three times. So basically, Peter had a faith problem. Peter had a faith problem the whole time he walked with Jesus. He wanted to serve, and God called him, but he had a faith problem the whole time. And so sometimes you'll put yourself in a situation not realizing it's God putting you in a situation. You know, God brings you to this church for a reason. Amen. And God put Peter in that boat for a reason because he wanted to allow Peter to see in himself that he has a faith problem. And just when you, sometimes you think you have victory over it because Peter began to walk on the water and, but then he began to sink and Jesus saved him, put him back in the boat, remember? And what did Jesus tell him? Why did you doubt? Oh, you a little faith, why did you doubt, right? So you would have thought at that time, Peter would have been healed of his faith problem, right? 
Later on, he denies Jesus three times. He had a faith problem. He still had a faith problem. Even though he walked with Jesus on the water, he still was bound by doubt. And though you've been in church a long time, and though you've seen, you know God can move, you're, you're bound by something, buddy. And you need to be set free. That's why when Peter, when he was redeemed by Jesus, Jesus asked him three times, you love me, you love me, you love me. He says, you, you gotta have faith, Peter. And, and Peter says, Lord, you know all things. Meaning his faith was finally in check. He says, Lord, you know all things. You gotta come to a point in your life where you say, Lord, you know all things. And trust him and walk with him. And stop listening to the world. Look, the deal with China is China's gonna do what God says China's gonna do. And I'm gonna tell you, they are going to be the superpower. They are going to be the nation that the Antichrist will have to deal with. We, we're of another world, Christian. All we do is we are the watchmen on the wall. We just tell them what the good news says. Amen? Amen. And we keep our eyes up above on heaven because that's where we're headed. Amen? Amen. Hey, if you can understand all this end time scripture and still not have a place in heaven. Come on now. We're going to heaven. We're going to heaven. Amen. And our hope is in Jesus. And that's the most important thing. We need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe the Lord is going to give me a lot more to talk about in the next several weeks in regards to what's, how end time scripture has been coming alive. I'm waiting on him and I believe he's going to give me something. But this deal with China, you know, we're making a big deal about these balloons. Well, I'm looking past the balloon. I'm looking at Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ain't that what Stephen said? Lord, I see me. He said, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. And they hated that because they couldn't see what he saw. Stephen was still alive, but he was in the glory of God. And I think that's what we need to do. We need to get into the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And you know if you're not in the presence of the Lord. My goodness, Father, I thank you. And I praise you, Lord, may this message fall on solid ground, on good, solid, spirit-filled ground, Lord. Lord, that it will take such root that when the winds come, it will be on solid ground that it will not wither or break away. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah.